Dear friends of veterinary medicine, welcome to a scientific presentation of DrHippocrates.com. Truth be said, it was not at all easy to choose the subject of this first presentation since I wanted it to have a symbolic meaning. Finally, after much thought, I came to something which I'm sure will seem to you neither symbolic nor significant, but hopefully before the end of this presentation you will have changed your mind. In this first presentation, we will talk about looking into things that people tend to take for granted. My name is John Economopoulos and I am the founder of DrHippocrates.com, the family site for the friends of veterinary science. Are you ready to get started? Before we get to how the subject of this presentation refers to veterinary science, I would like first to share with you the small revelation that I experienced when, for the first time, I paid attention to the literal meaning of letters. I soon realized that a mystery had been hiding in plain view just in front of my eyes ever since I started learning my mother tongue, which is Greek. And the mystery was this. Why do the names of the Greek letters seem like regular words, whereas those of Latin correspond simply to how they're pronounced? Remember, for example, that we have alpha for A and epsilon for E. What does the word alpha mean? And who came up with these names? And to take this one step further, who came up with the shapes of letters and how are these associated with their names? This introduced me for the first time to investigative learning and of course changed my life completely since from that moment on I would waste endless hours reading dictionaries and research articles about every little thing you can possibly imagine. So I started investigating the origin of the word alpha and I was amazed because my findings led me back to where I was, the study of veterinary science. And what better way to show how this happened than with a source story borrowed from another presentation of DrHippocrates.com which goes like this. Many, many centuries ago in a place called Mesopotamia, meaning the place which lies between rivers, people would raise animals such as this and would keep records of their oxes that would call alephs, with drawings that were perhaps not exactly like this, but maybe looked a bit like this. The alephs horns gradually rolled down to the side and believe it or not, this was how the letter A was formed in Greek and its names changed from aleph into alpha. A very similar story also hides behind other letters, like for example the letter delta, which is the Greek for D. Don't you think that D looks a bit like a giraffe? Would you find it impossible to believe that in Mesopotamia the giraffe was called Daleth and Daleth gradually became delta? Given that when I first discovered the hidden meaning of letters, I was already a student in vet school, I felt very surprised by the amazing association between letters, which constitute the foundation of our civilization, and animals. I'm sure you can now guess how striking it was for me to hear in anatomy class the name of the bone called sacrum, which in Greek translates into iero, meaning sacred. Now, why would anyone choose the name sacred for a bone and how could I ever let this mystery remain without an investigation? And of course the investigation was conducted and it finally borne fruit. As around the 1st century AC, the Romans have already more than 300 years behind them as founders of great empire. At that time, we find the first complete printed textbook on medicine called De Medicina, which was written by the Roman encyclopedist and possibly physician Celsus. 
Starting with this book, the Romans begin their efforts to refrain from the use of Greek anatomical terms and propose instead Latin names. And here comes the tricky part, which is why my amazed cat photo Whoa. came to join us. Translating Greek anatomical terms into Latin was a trap, not unlike the other famous Greek trap which was carrying its hidden message inside its belly, the Trojan horse. Since Greek anatomical terms were deducted from everyday words with several different meanings, and this was also the case with sacrum. Because in addition to sacred, the word iero was also used in Greek to denote strong, since sacred objects represent the divine glory and strength. Of course, the use of the Greek term for the certain bone was literal and not metaphorical, since sacrum constitutes of vertebrae that are bound together very closely into a unit which is very strong. And this is why it's called sacred. This is why it is called sacrum. In birds, this bone is even more solidly built compared to mammals because this increases the thrust generated by the flap of the wings and improves the elevation. This second meaning of the word iero, meaning strong, was much less common in Greek compared to sacred, and chances are that by the time the Romans decided to translate iero into sacrum, the meaning strong was already lost. No much harm done, at least not for us, because we can lose one thing but find another, and in this case, having lost the meaning of alpha and sacrum, we discover the significance of investigative learning, which is both symbolic and significant. Investigative learning can throw light into the dark corners of knowledge and can help us find our way towards self-improvement. Veterinary science is an excellent guide to this journey because, like in the case of Alpha, it hides behind many things, like in the case of the word sacrum, helps you understand that searching into the things that people tend to take for granted will help you retain your course towards self-improvement with confidence and enthusiasm. And this is why we end up from trivial letters and words to a lesson that I hope you will not disagree is a lesson of life rather than one of veterinary medicine. But is this not the case with all knowledge journeys? Maybe that's why we call them wonderful since their beginning is given, but their end is in most cases unpredictable. Thank you very much for your interest in DrHippocrates.com, the family site for the friends of veterinary science. Until next time, please enjoy your investigations and have a good time. Thank you very much. <laughs>